Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the ultimate in off road vehicles. Hatfield McCoy Trails, where hundreds of miles of off road adventure await you today. Yamaha ATVs and side by side vehicles. Real world tough. And by Honda. Check out the growing family of Honda ATVs and side by sides. At the start of the season, I always like to do some kind of a cool big adventure just to get me out of snow mode and into dirt and, and get my head wrapped up. Last season, I had the opportunity to travel to Gateway Canyons Resort for the Arctic Cat introduction of the new Wildcat Trail as well as the Wildcat 1000X. And just from the scenery, uh, the different riding terrain and what the place had to offer, I knew we had to go back. For dirt tracks, I have the opportunity to travel a lot of really cool places, do a whole lot of crazy and different things, and travel with tons of interesting people. But it's funny because most people will ask how I like working with my dad and my brother, and the truth is, we don't travel together all that often. AJ uh, talked to me about three or four months ago and said that he wanted me to join him on this tour and this trip to Utah and Colorado and to experience the Gateway Canyon and Gateway Canyon Resort. I was amped and ready to go and to find out what this whole thing was gonna unfold like because it sure sounded good on paper. The last time we were at Gateway Canyon Resort, I was actually discussing with uh, somebody from there how Moab was so close. And when looking on Google Maps, we found out that it was literally um, less than 50 miles or approximately 50 miles across the desert. So uh, that, was, that was the reason I wanted to go back. I thought, man, we snowmobile more than that all the time. Why can't we do this on an ATV or a side-by-side? So we had to travel from the airport to Gateway Canyons Resort before we went to Moab because we were picking up the fella who had set up the whole trip for us and, and kind of organized and planned the gateway end of it. My name is Chuck Dempsey. I'm the race director here at Gateway Colorado for Driven Experiences. We got about 28 Baja 1000s under the belt, trying to catch my dad who's got 41 Baja 1000s under his belt, so uh, I got a little ways to go still. I used to race on motorcycles prior for most of my racing career and uh, got into the racing the cars and, and the trophy trucks in the last uh, about 10 years. Last year at the Arctic Cat introduction, I talked to Chuck about an idea similar to this. We called Chuck and said, hey, We'll show you what we do in the winter time, going from destination to destination. And he said, sure, sounds good. Why don't I show you what we do here at Gateway with the Driven Experiences, and we can make this kind of a, a big adventure for you guys. And it sounded cool to him, sounded cool to us, and it just kind of fell together. So the route that we were planning to take was from Moab to Gateway Canyons Resort and then eventually back again. The route was gonna take us uh, out through Moab, past all the cool slick rock that everybody knows Moab for, up into the mountains, gaining altitude, and across what are called the LaSalle Mountains, eventually coming back down into more canyonous terrain uh, at Gateway and eventually bringing us pretty much right to the front doors of the Gateway Canyons Resort. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Brimstone, where the journey is your reward.
On the first morning of our adventure, we ended up at Dirt Seekers, which is in Moab, and they are an Arctic Cat rental uh, facility. Dirt Seekers had uh, a brand new Wildcat trail with, I think it had like 30, 30 miles on it, and they had a, uh, an older 1000 Wildcat for us. Everything was ready to go. We got geared up, we were set. Didn't really know what the day was gonna hold, but we were excited. My first impression when we left the town of Moab was, this is super cool because we drove right down the main street on side-by-sides and so was everybody else. I mean, this place is a gearhead's paradise. It was pretty amazing to me, uh, the stunning beauty and the potential to have a blast riding off-road. And the vistas there, are, they're big. I mean, it's, it's big country, it's big scenery, and it's not the kind of thing you get to see very often where you're, you know, you look to your right and it's all kind of burnt off desert, crazy rocks and mountains. And then you look to your left and it's the LaSalle Mountains that are green, they have a little snow up top and there's, you know, vegetation and it's lush and it looks beautiful. It's, it's truly polar opposites. So the route between Moab and Gateway, um, I've been on John Brown, that's the road that we took off there. I've been down there almost three quarters of the way, but never went that extra part to get to Moab. But it's an awesome route, super scenic, and it's great for the Articats. I mean, great for Jeeps, anything to go across. It's fun for everybody. I mean, we got everything, and, and obviously the, the area is just beautiful to, to be riding in. Climbing mountains and then running a mountain pass with a thousand foot drop off, literally inches away from your uh, uh, from the edge of the road, it was just uh, a very uh, actually an emotional experience. It can be terrifying, it can be exciting, but one thing for sure, it's good. If you look on the maps and you investigate a little further. There is tons and tons of trails. Most of them are what you would consider to be like a fire road. Um, they're wide and really accessible, a little higher speed, a little more fun. There is there's just a ton to do around the Moab area, from Moab to the LaSalle Mountains. You can, you can spend days there, you can probably spend weeks and not ride the same trails. So Chuck doesn't spend too much time in side-by-sides, but he's starting to. And <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that we gave him a good, you know, a good experience. That we picked up the pace, had some fun. As much as he was riding behind me and uh, had to deal with the dust, I, I knew that he was, uh, he was gonna get a good ride out of this. When you got a guy like Chuck Dempsey following you in a Wildcat 1000, uh, there's a little pressure on to make sure you uh, keep the entertainment level fairly high. Things pretty much got uh, wound up tight like they usually do with either one of my sons, AJ or Luke, and uh, things kicked into high gear and we got some super, super good fast riding with a lot of really sweet corners, backing it in, power sliding, inside uh, front tire off the ground. Uh, I was really pleased to be able to ride with AJ because he can drive the wheels off of pretty much everything or anything. And uh, we had a really cool ride, particularly the last part going into Gateway. The UTVs give uh, something like, you know, that's closest to what we get to drive, the, the big trucks, but a lot less expensive. So, you know, it's cool that anybody can do it and uh, it's just a lot of fun. You're in the dirt, you're going sideways, you're jumping, and you know, especially when me and AJ drove, we're going side by side racing, and, and it's, it's cool, just a lot of fun. We got into the canyonous uh, terrain nearing Gateway, and I started to recognize some of the stuff I had ridden 
from the previous year, and I knew we were getting close. Um, we blasted down the roads into Gateway, and we were all really excited to get across, get to the resort, and sort of, uh, sort of cool down after a long day, not knowing whether we were gonna make it, not knowing whether we were gonna have you know, these great obstacles or issues in the middle. We were, we were excited to roll in and, uh, and finish our day off, and that's just what we did. I was pretty excited for Mark to be able to experience Gateway because it's a place like no other. It's an oasis. It is this incredibly huge, brand new, five star, eight star, 10 star, whatever you want to call it, resort. It, it's kind of mind boggling to think that you're gonna go there and then you start wondering, wow, here we are on side-by-sides, is this cool? So at Gateway Canyons Resort, they have the driven experiences, and one of those is the Pro Baja driven experience, meaning you get to ride a Pro Baja truck, either a ride along, or you get to drive it if you do the full experience. And that's what Chuck had in store for us at Gateway, was the Pro Baja experience. I mean, he's a racer, that's what he does, and this is why he's at Gateway. I was super excited, Mark was pumped, Chuck was excited to show us what these things could do, and it was, it was like kids in candy stores, man. Tune in next week for the remainder of our adventure, including the Driven Pro Baja experience, followed by Mark and my departure from Gateway Canyons Resort back to Moab. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Super ATV, the industry leader in aftermarket parts and accessories for the off-road market. The most popular 50 inch wide UTV would have to be the Polaris Razor. In particular, the Polaris Razor 800. It's had incredible sales and been undisputed up until now. Arctic Cat has blazed a trail of performance with the Wildcat 1000 and Wildcat X, but the sheer width of the big kitty made it hard to ride on many trails. And the price tag kept entry-level riders at bay, meaning the only other option was a Prowler, a very solid utility vehicle, but not in the league of the 50-inch Razor. One of the most on-point comments I've ever heard from any manufacturer was when Arctic Cat's Mark Esla said that they didn't just need to compete with the Polaris Razor, they needed to beat it in every way. Now that's focus. And from that laser-guided focus came the 50-inch wide Wildcat Trail, we gave you a sneak peek at it last year. We now have the full test ride to let you sink your teeth into. And after spending multiple days out riding in Moab, Utah and Gateway, Colorado on the Wildcat Trail, I can tell you this vehicle is precisely what Arctic Cat said it would be. Right up front, what do you notice about the Wildcat Trail? Besides its aggressive stance and good looking styling, it has half doors. Those are installed at the factory and no, you don't pay extra for them. Not even on the base model. Also included on the base model, Fox nitrogen charged aluminum rebuildable shocks with threaded preload. This is, in my opinion, one of the biggest differentiating factors between the trail and the competition. These shocks are premium, but this is a base model. Instead of super low quality steel body shocks with the limited snail cam adjusters, Articat stepped up and equipped a premium shock. And yes, they ride incredibly well. In fact, I found the high speed choppy compliance to be so much better than the competition. The only thing I can compare it to is the bigger 60 inch sport rigs. Having a hugely adjustable threaded spring on all four corners is a big help to settling out the rough chop and also allows you to have a solid stance when blazing the corners. Add front and rear sway bars and the ability to go fast is increased, keeping the Wildcat planted and confident even when the rear end breaks loose and you start steering with the gas pedal. And steer this vehicle with the gas pedal, you can. Arctic Cat didn't want to rate the Wildcat trail by CCs, and I totally agree, because the power produced from this motor will completely surprise you. Polaris's 800 claims in the neighborhood of 55 horsepower, and when I saw Arctic spec at 700 cc, I figured they'd made a big mistake. But the truth is, this 700 puts out over 60 horsepower. 
Arctic doesn't give a final number, but seat of the pants says this thing's got all of the mid 60s. Plus, it's a hair lighter and uses a Team Industries rapid response clutch to solidly transfer all that power to the dirt. From the driver's seat, you get the same feeling as the 1000 Wildcat, where you sit down inside of the vehicle instead of perched up on top. And the interior features, they lead the pack too. Shifting the Wildcat's transmission delivers such a buttery smooth feel, you'd question that it actually hooked up. This is the best shifting side-by-side -side in the industry. Showing you what gear you're in is a very clean digital display and has a huge list of info, from fuel level to RPM, engine temperature, intake temp, and a whole lot more. The steering wheel is adjustable, and more than that, it's a sporty, smaller wheel that has a nice rubber texture and gripped hand bolsters for easier locating three and nine o'clock. And while you may question the lack of power steering even on the XT model, the truth is you do not need it, even with the smaller ratio tight steering wheel. If I have one gripe in the UTV world, it's abusively heavy steering. And when that tends to be the case, a lot of manufacturers will add power steering. In this case, power steering will do very little. The Trail is by far the lightest steering side-by-side -side I've ever driven, and in no way needs assist. It's confident at high speeds, feels centered and secure, and somehow is incredibly light at low speeds. I don't know what Articat did, but it's right, it's light, and it works. The trail that I tested today does have a few accessories, like the roof, the light bar, the windshield, and the bumpers. But the truth is, the factory options included are very impressive for this class. The ground clearance is not leading in this class, and is 0.9 inches less than the Polaris. However, the Arctic Cat does come factory equipped with a 2-inch hitch receiver, which is so much easier to swap out from your truck than the typical inch and a quarter hitch mount. For me, I'd take the 2-inch receiver, even with the clearance penalty. It's pretty obvious that Arctic Cat had the Polaris Razor in mind when they built this vehicle. And why wouldn't they? Polaris has had a free market and done so well with the Razor platform. But Arctic needed to bring a vehicle to market that hit 99% of its better than you targeting. And that is precisely what they did. Now, if only they could offer it for the same price as the Razor. Oh wait, that's right, it's cheaper. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers. Know it, own it, haul it. The number one reason we absolutely love Diamondback truck covers is because they nearly double the usefulness of your pickup truck's box, especially for guys like us who often haul ATVs. Traditional soft and hard tonneau covers just don't cut it for us any longer. Having the ability to load not just one, but two ATVs on the cover and all your gear under makes getting to the trail a whole lot easier. But here's what we really love about Diamondback as a company. The guys behind the scenes designing and building these products are avid outdoor enthusiasts just like us. They use their own trucks to haul ATVs and cargo day in and day out. They really do understand what we, as ATVers, need from our truck covers because they've run into the same problems or limitations as we have at one time or another. This fact is further reinforced by Diamondback's long list of accessories designed to expand the usefulness and convenience of their covers. Up until this point, we've only tested the covers themselves here on Dirt Tracks, but today I'd like to take a look at two accessories that'll take your Diamondback truck cover to a whole nother level. Because of the way the Diamondback covers mount on your truck, you may be forced to ditch your rail-mounted toolbox. This could be a problem for guys who work with their trucks and need to safely store a lot of gear or tools on board. If you think about it, a bed-mounted toolbox is a lot like a smaller version of a single Diamondback panel with a bin underneath. So the guys at Diamondback designed a full-size, rail-mounted, removable toolbox that's capable of holding all the stuff you used to keep in your old toolbox, but still allow you to use your Diamondback cover to its full potential. Installation of the toolbox is as simple as it gets. Just remove your front panel, drop the box in, and put the panel back on. Once the lid is closed, the box is sealed from the elements, and when the cover is locked, so is the toolbox. So your expensive equipment is as safe as it can get. Maybe you don't need that much additional storage. Maybe you're trying to keep the front of your pickup box open for other things, or maybe you just want to keep smaller items close at hand. No problem. A set of Diamondback's side toolboxes are exactly what you're looking for. 
These little guys mount to the center panel of the cover and are supported by your truck's bed rails. They can be mounted beneath the front or rear panels of the cover. At about nine by 18 inches in size, we found they're perfect for storing tie-down straps when we're not hauling ATVs on the cover. It's pretty annoying, definitely inefficient, and just plain uncool to randomly toss your tie-down straps in the back of your truck. It never fails that the moment you need them, they'll either be shoved all the way to the front of your box or tangled up in whatever else you're trying to haul under your cover. The side toolboxes are the perfect size and fit in the perfect location to keep your tie downs out of the way, well organized, but still easily accessible when it's time to load up your ATVs. Of course, there are a thousand other things you could store in them, so the possibilities are really endless. We haul thousands of miles year after year, and almost every one of them with an ATV strapped on top of our Diamondback truck cover. We know this product well, and we've come to rely on it day in and day out. Innovative accessories like the front and side toolboxes have erased some of the very few limitations the Diamondback cover has and have made our covers even more useful and a lot more convenient. Just imagine what a Diamondback cover and a few toolboxes could do for you. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the ultimate in off-road vehicles. Can-Am. The ride says it all. MBRP Performance Exhaust. Making power with MBRP. Arctic Cat. Share our passion. And by Honda. Check out the growing family of Honda ATVs and side-by-sides. If you enjoyed this video, post a comment and let us know what you think. Then click this link to subscribe and that link for more great videos from Dirt Tracks TV.